Hello, Rule Mithril here once again, getting back to VVVVVV with a new updated version. I got the version off of good old games. This version, as well as the Steam version, it gives me access to all the goodies like player levels and everything, but also puts save files in a far more manageable spot on your computer. The version I was playing, it was actually coded in Flash, meaning your save file was actually hidden in a very hard to access folder in system files dealing with Flash itself. This one, far more manageable in case I need to back up and restore saves, in case I derail myself really bad, get lost and leave something behind, that sort of thing. This isn't about cutting back on deaths, those are just going to happen no matter what. But anyway, let's get right back to it. Now since I upgraded the game I did have to get back here again, but we didn't really get too far in. And it is notable, we're still at zero deaths. So, let's head out into the dimension proper. Checking the map, you can kind of see where you are. You can also see that, obviously, we left some stuff undone over in the yellow sector. So, the completionist in me, I feel inclined to go ahead and go finish that up. Which may be a mistake. But, it's what we're doing anyway. That's how I roll. Just come down this way. And we can go in here just to knock out this dead end. It is notable that the map does loop from left to right. So that's good to know. And so we have another teleporter, and also this. Research notes. Despite our best efforts, the dimensional stabilizer won't hold out forever. Its collapse is inevitable. Huh? These coordinates aren't even in this dimension. Do be cautious so that you don't just walk right off into the spikes. Research notes. The final step in creating the dimensional stabilizer was to create a feedback loop. And so we have a later point of interest on the map. For now though, we're going this way, into the outer hull. The high road is low. We want to get on the underside of these platforms. And once you do, move quickly so that you don't get smashed into the spikes. And with that, the third shiny trinket. Well, these truths won't set us free. It can be kind of tricky to get used to your velocity. I don't actually think it matters which way you go here. Just whichever feels more comfortable to you. This can be a bit of a thing, though. There we go. So there was a shiny trinket back there. We're gonna have to take a roundabout route for it. Which first means getting by these. And now doing this room the other way. Finding safe places to stand is a bit of a thing, but 4 out of 20. practically painless. I had to say it. Fate tempted. Mm -hmm. 
lies! Another shiny trinket, but we'll have to come after that from another angle. teleporter. We're not actually done yet. Far from it. Research notes. Everything collapses eventually. It's the way of the universe. And before anyone asks, don't touch this thing. It's hazardous to your health. So I believe we want to go down here. Yeah, there we go. More lies! Badly timed! And that's 5 out of 20. What lies beneath? We don't want to know. Because it was spikes! So once you get past these spikes, immediately flip back down to the ground. Otherwise, lies will immediately kill you. So one thing worth noting, the room names here, apparently they were created by Bennett Foddy of Getting Over It fame. Which before anyone asks, no, I am never playing that game. People say this is a rage game. Not nearly as much as that. Didn't quite clear the gap. Like I said, sometimes getting used to your velocity can be a bit of a thing. There we go. The warning. Yeah, things are only going to get worse from here. Yes, it's time for perhaps the most infamous shiny trinket in the game. Personal log. Ha, nobody will ever get this one. So, thanks to this little bump on the ground here, and Captain Viridian's inability to jump, we indeed have to do things the hard way. This whole thing is basically Twitch muscle memory. Yeah, the thing is, unlike a Mega Man style spike drop, you don't have that slow scroll between screens to have a moment to figure out what's coming up next. Hmm, almost had it. It's really easy to want to adjust too quickly. And in knowing that, sometimes you react too slowly. We're gonna be here a while. Oh, almost. And it's one of those that the farther in you get, the more frustrating it is, because then you start getting impatient with the early parts of this. The real heartbreaker is I think the first time I played this game, the first time I actually succeeded at the Vinny Vidi Vici spike drop here, when I got out the other side, I fell on the wrong side and thus had to do it again. So hopefully we 
don't have a repeat of that. This is painful enough already. And there we go, we got it. Six out of twenty. That didn't take quite as long as I expected it to. Joke's on you, I got it. So that, thankfully, is one of the hardest shiny trinkets in the game out of the way. Okay, you don't have time to run from that. Because now we're on the other side of areas we've been through before. Misinterpreted that pretty badly. I wonder if the generator we set up in the polar dimension is what's affecting our teleporters. No, it's probably just a glitch. Almost hit those spikes. And so instead I hit those. I was too busy looking after the giant red thing. So this one, prize for the reckless. You might be wondering, how the heck are we supposed to get that shiny trinket? Well, there's a moving platform up above. The trick here is... We have to revive at this checkpoint, from the same room. Which means we have to come around to the other side, and die there after doing the setup we need. As such, we can't hit any other checkpoints along the way. This, too, is a rather tricky shiny trinket. Because so often checkpoints are where you really want to be. And again, it's another of those that it's a long sequence. So if you die far into it, it gets kind of frustrating. Just my luck that what seemed like the most sensible path for me to take involves doing two of the most annoying shiny trinkets early on. Just my luck. So, we have these two gotcha traps here. But we made it. So with that... And there we go. So that's 7 out of 20. And now we can use checkpoints. Which also makes getting through these rooms a lot easier, of course. So I've never been crazy enough to try it. But apparently the no-death version of the run, if you want to do that and still get all the shiny trinkets, apparently it changes that one so a death is not actually required. Ah, Viridian, you got off the ship all right too? It's good to see you're all right, Professor. Is the ship okay? It's badly damaged, but Violet's been working on fixing it. We could really use your help. Ah, of course. The background interference in this dimension prevented the ship from finding a teleporter when we crashed. We've all been teleported to different locations. Er, uh, that sounds about right. Let's get back to the ship, then. After you, Captain. And off we go. You have rescued a crew member, three remain. So with that, we have fully explored the yellow sector. A pretty chunky one, too. And we have rescued Vitellary. So all of the characters are named after colors in a way. Viridian and Violet, those ones are pretty straightforward. Vitellary, I had to look that one up. Apparently it's the part of an egg where the yolk is formed, so yellow fits. But with that, we've completed that sector. We've had a few deaths. Uh, 34. 
I feel like I died more than that, actually. I'll take it. But anyway, that's where we're going to call it for now, so thank you very much for watching, I hope you're enjoying the series so far, and I shall see you again next time. Until then, fare thee well. Whee!